welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you like my method of teaching, please don't be shy. Give me a thumbs up, comment below, and remember to subscribe my channel. So let's get started. So I'm still doing from 4 chapter 1 function under composite function, which is 1.2. So hopefully you guys already viewed my previous 1.1 function video and 1.3 inverse function video because that will help you to understand this part more. Mm. So let's get started. So chapter 1 function, 1.2 composite function. What is composite function? So for you to understand that, let's talk about what is function. So based on what you learn in 1.1, you guys should know function means relation between two parties. So let's say here is x, here is y. So relation between these two parties, we call it function. So let's call it alphabet F. Then what is composite function? Composite function is when you have more than one function, you combine them together, we call it composite function. So let's say I added another thing called z. So let's say y go to z called g. So, f is function, g is function, but if I from x walk over to z, then we call it composite function. Then the problem is, x go to z, what do we call that bridge? I always say that is considered as bridge, okay, that connect them together. So, what is the bridge name? You guys usually like to write fg, which is actually wrong. So, guys, why you cannot write fg? Because I hope you guys understand this particular concept. The first one you cross, okay, always right on the right hand side. Then the second one, the second bridge that you cross, you don't write behind you, you write in front of you. Can you guys see that? Please remember that concept. That is actually how we form the name. Later on, you will actually understand it better. So, guys, if there's third one, you're gonna write in front, fourth one, right in front, fifth one, right in front. You will from right side right towards the left side please remember the concept of forming the correct name so guys let's say you already know how to form the name so now let me give you one example of how do we gonna do composite function so to make you understand better i give you a very very easy example in black color okay so let's say one becoming two so one becoming two got a lot of relation but let's say this one is because they plus one so if their relation is plus 1, isn't it? They will give you the relation, the equation, fx equals to x plus 1. That means from 1 becoming 2, the relation will be just plus 1. Next one, let's say 2 becoming 4. So 2 becoming 4, maybe some of you will tell me plus 2. I know it can be plus 2, but based on my example, I want to say it is times 2. So isn't it gx equation then will be times 2. So let's say the questions provide you all this. And again, they want to find from 1 to 4. So how do I find 1 to 4? I repeat again, isn't it? The first one you cross now is F. So the first one, I'll write on the right hand side. The second one you cross, we call it G. Isn't it? The second one, you guys will write in front. So now I know from 1 becoming 4, the composite function, we call it GFX. So let's say this question just want to find GFX, which is actually the composite function. So how do we find the composite function? Isn't it? We just need to combine the FX and GX together. Then they eventually will walk through two bridge. Then I will get the composite function. Then how do I combine them together? So the first thing is, you guys need to separate them. Why will you separate them? Because you should know. If possible, you can cross the two bridge together. You will eventually crossing it one by one. So since you're crossing it one by one, then we should do one by one. So you should split them. After you get split them, can you guys see the inner function and the outer function? Which one will you do first? Based on what you learn in mathematics, isn't it bracket always come first? So isn't it we should do the bracket part first? So isn't it we should settle the inside part first? So there also the reason why that I say the inside one is the first bridge because that is actually the first one you cross. So you should always do the inside part first. Can you guys understand it better now? So inside now do we we call it fx? So do I have fx equation now? Yes, exactly on top provided, isn't it? Fx exactly is here. So fx, they say, is x plus 1. So isn't it? I can straight away write x plus 1 here. Okay, later on, I will give you more example. You will understand it better later. So now just try to patiently listen to what I'm going to say, okay? So guys, fx is x plus 1. So I sub in x plus 1. So don't ask me, teacher, where is the f? 
the whole fx already become x plus 1. So the whole x plus 1 will replace fx, correct? So until this moment, how do you guys continue? You guys always try to open bracket. You should know this is a function. You cannot really open bracket because they are not really times relation. So if they are not times relation, then how do you guys do it? So actually, once you guys sub fx, it means that you already cross one bridge. Now you just need to cross the second one. So when you cross the second one, I hope you guys know that, that whatever inside the bracket, no matter how complicated they are, they are always your alphabet x. Because the normal name, we call it fx, gx, hx, correct, right? So isn't it the bracket, no matter how complicated they are, that means now my object becomes x plus 1. Then the outside, isn't it still g? So... For you to understand this, I need to give you a lot of example because you guys, students are always most confused on this part. Once you master this, everything in this chapter shouldn't be a problem. So I'll give you guys one example here. Let's say gx is 5x minus 3. Let's say this is the equation they give you. So let's say A, they want to find g1. So guys, when they write, want to find g1, isn't it, will you open bracket call it 1g? No, then isn't it the 1? always represent the alphabet of x that is what i say no matter what they write inside they are always represent the alphabet of x so outside isn't it g so now i know they actually call it gx and gx do i have the equation yes they provided up here which is 5x minus 3 correct but the problem is is it correct i read 5x minus 3 no why not because you should realize that now the x not x anymore it become one so isn't it this particular x should change to 1 as well? So if you understand this, I always tell my student to erase off the x and then the x I will replace by 1. Can you guys see that? And just like that, you guys will get the answer. So give you guys another example. Let's say B, you're going to find G A. So guys, you're going to find G A. Then how do you guys find G A? It's the same concept. Can you open bracket for this? No. So I repeat again, no matter how complicated inside or how weird inside is, they are always alphabet X, which is actually your object. And the one they cross isn't it called G? And GX, do I have the equation? Yes, it's still the same one as the top, isn't it? 5X minus 3. Is it correct or not if I write like that? No. Why no? Because guys, you should know again, the X become A now. Isn't it the X for this part should become A as well? So that's the reason I always take an eraser. I erase off the x and isn't it the x should become a instead. Just like that. Then I got it. Come out a slightly harder one. What if now they are g 2x over okay la, 2x plus 8. Guys, don't because they become 2x plus 8, you feel like it's so hard. It's actually the same thing. So I repeat again, can you open bracket? No, because it's function. So you cannot open bracket, isn't it? No matter what, inside is alphabet x. Then in full, isn't it? We call it gx. Again, do I have gx equation up here? Yes, isn't it called 5x minus 3? And this time round, I repeat again. The x now become 2x plus 8. So do you think this x, I still write x? No. So isn't it, I will take the eraser, I will erase off the x, while the x should change to whatever you stated here, 2x plus 8. Can you see that? If you understand this concept, let's look back to my example here. So guys, on this part, I know that this one is gx. And isn't it, gx equation is up here, which is 2x, correct? So I repeat again, is it correct I write 2x? No. Because if they write gx, you copy gx, obviously you're correct. You need to understand whatever I just said. So isn't it the gx, if they say gx, you can write 2x, but they didn't write gx. Now you're actually doing gx plus 1. So do you guys realize that your x in this situation become x plus 1 instead, correct? So what will I do? I will always take an eraser, erase off the x then. And the x should be replaced by x plus 1. So just remember that your alphabet X must always follow the top bracket. That is actually how I do it. Just always using my erase method. Until you master it, you will definitely know how to do this one. So let me expand it. Isn't it 2 times X become 2X? 2 times 1, isn't it 2? Got it. My GFX answer, isn't it 2X plus 2? Done. And just in case you suspect me, let me show you. Now we are trying to from 1, walk over the GF and getting 4, correct? 
and let's see whether we getting the correct equation or not. So do you guys realize the starting is one? So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna sub the one inside. So do you realize the x I sub one because I know that is what number that I start with. And now the x become one, isn't it? This x will become one as well. So what? two times one, two, two plus two, four. Most important. Do I get back whatever I ended with? Yes. Ta -da! That means this method definitely work. By now, I guess you understand the basic and let's start to do some questions. So guys, let's look at this question one. So this question one, let's say they already give you fx equation and gx equation. I think all of you can see that. And let's start from A. A, they'll find fgx. So I repeat again, you'll find fgx, which is actually crossing two bridge, which is actually composite function. So isn't it the first step? You guys will separate them. Correct? As what I say, you're going to cross one by one, not together. So you're going to separate them. After you guys separate them, isn't it forever start from the inside one? Because the inside is the first one you cross. And the inside one called what? Called gx. And isn't it gx equation? is the yellow color one. So this one, they call it gx. Obviously, I can just copy down gx. Don't ask me, teacher, this x, why you don't erase? Because they exactly write x here. So I don't need to erase anything. I just straight away copy it down. So isn't it my gx is 3x plus 1. So on this stage, again, is the part that I keep explaining. Will you expand it? No, because their function is not for you to expand. So if you cannot expand, isn't it, no matter how complicated inside is, they are always alphabet X. Then in full, isn't it, they are actually FX. Saw it? So guys, how do I do FX then? So you cannot expand it, but you can sub it in. Isn't it FX equation is the one in blue? So in blue, I know fx equation will be x squared minus 1. So isn't it I can straight away write x squared minus 1. Some students, they will ask me, teacher, then where the f go? I hope you guys understand the whole fx already become x squared minus 1. So the moment you write x squared minus 1, they are representing fx, correct? But the problem is, is it correct I write like that? No. Which part wrong again? Guys, the x. Isn't it I will erase off the x? I'm going to repeat. Because the x now is not x anymore, isn't it? For this situation, now my x is 3x plus 1. So isn't it this particular x I erase off, they should opt in 3x plus 1 instead. So on this particular moment, all you need to do is just mathematics. Let's start to do square. So square, isn't it? That means the same bracket, it will happen twice. So let me write for you. Isn't it minus 1? So we slowly expand it. So 3, 3, isn't it 9? x, x, isn't it x squared? 3x times 1, 3x. 1 times 3x, 3x. 1 times 1, still 1. And after that, minus 1. So let's combine them together. 9x squared, obviously still there. x combined becomes 6x. And 1 minus 1 will be 0. I got it. My fgx answer will be 9x squared plus 6x. Don't tell me they are general form and try to press calculator, okay? General form must equivalent to 0. They don't have 0. This is just the equation answer that they're actually asking. Hopefully, my speed is not too fast for you because if it's too fast, you replay a few times, okay? Because I really feel like you should understand it by now. So B, they'll find GFX. So the same concept, crossing two bridge. Guys, don't expect FG and GF will get the same answer. When you cross the bridge, okay, the sequence does matters. So that's the reason when FG and GF, they shouldn't get the same answer. Maybe they will, but majority of the time, they won't. So let's look at B, they will find GFX. So isn't it GFX? Your first step will be separate that. Correct? Based on what I say, you're going to cross one by one. So again, you guys will sub the inside one first because that is the first one you cross and the inside called FX. FX is the one in blue color. Isn't it? Based on the blue color, I can straight away copy down X squared minus 1. I don't need to erase anything because they call it FX. I copy FX, which is actually quite understandable. So again, on this moment, can I open bracket? No. Why? Because I repeat, you, this is a function. It's not for you to expand. So if you cannot open bracket, isn't it no matter what? Inside always represented by the alphabet X. And outside, isn't it, will be G. So now I know this GX equation. And GX, isn't it, will be the one in yellow color. So based on the yellow color, I realized that at GX is actually 3X plus 1. Correct? I repeat again, don't ask me, teacher, where the G go. The whole GX become 3x plus 1. So the moment you write 3x plus 1, GX already disappeared. So guys, again, is this correct? Is it correct I write like that? I hope you answer me, no. 
because I keep asking you the same thing. Which part wrong, my dear? The X. So I'll take an eraser and erase off the X because now my X actually become X squared minus 1, which my object already become X squared minus 1. So it's only the X, I will opt in X squared minus 1 instead because you already walk 1 and now your object is X squared minus 1. So you sub it in and they will walk the second one in that way. So now all you need to do is open bracket. Remember to put bracket, yeah? So 3 times X squared, 3 X squared. 3 times negative 1, negative 3 plus 1. Negative 3 plus 1 will be negative 2. Da -da 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 -da. Got the answer again. Let's look at C. So guys, C, they put G squared. What is G squared? I hope you guys know that. Can I should write again? G squared too. So don't because G squared then you feel very panicked. G squared, do it mean a normal function? No. G squared, that means they got double G. And double G, that means they still cross two bridge, which is still under whatever I do today, which is composite function. Just that they cross the same relation bridge, okay? So how do I do it? Exactly the same thing. Isn't it your first step? will be split them because as what I said you will always cross one by one you won't cross together and this time round they got slightly different because they have a number here so do number make any different actually no you can actually do while doing this you can do as usual whilst up in this particular number composite function no need to purposely find out a composite function only sub it in you can straight away do as usual so let me show you how so how do I do the inside part? So I repeat again. Can you open bracket? No. It's because I keep saying the same thing. This is a function. So isn't it no matter how complicated inside is, they are always alphabet X. And outside isn't it G? So again, I know this is actually called GX. And GX equation based on the top, isn't it, is the one in yellow color. So in yellow color, I realized it will be 3X plus 1. So guys, I write 3X plus 1. This time round, can I just write 3x plus 1? No. Guys, I hope you know, yeah? Just now, inside is gx. You copy gx, obviously correct. But now, they didn't write gx. They write what? g2. So again, isn't it? I will take my eraser and erase off the x. Because the x should become 2 instead. Because now your x become 2, then isn't it? Whenever you sub in, your x should change it to 2 as well. So I keep repeating the same thing. I really hope by now you slightly master it i cannot be too greedy so two times three six six plus one is only seven so do you realize with number is actually so easy because you can straight away become a number out so g7 how do you guys continue that means i already done walking the first bridge let's continue walk the second one so i repeat can i open bracket no don't know why i feel like this video i i talk even faster so yeah if, if you if you feel the same please let me know maybe i i just too get used to you know, talking to the camera by myself. So guys, look at this G7. So how do I do this G7 again? You know you cannot open bracket. We actually call it GX. So GX equation is what? Isn't it GX equation? Don't tell me the blue one. Uh. Don't try to mix blue and yellow together. This is GX. Isn't it GX still the yellow one? So why am I still using the yellow one? Because they call it G squared. That means you walk the yellow one twice. Never even touch the blue color equation, which is the FX. So don't care about the blue one, just keep using the yellow one because you are walking the yellow one twice, okay? Hopefully you guys can see the color. So how do I do GX? So same thing, based on the yellow one, GX equation is 3X plus 1. So I keep repeat. Is it correct I write like that? No. Because if they are GX, you can write copy GX. But now they actually write G7. So isn't it? I will take my eraser and erase off the X. And the X should become... 7 instead because based on what they wrote on top isn't it my x becomes 7 so 3 times 7 21 21 plus 1 22 Ta -da -da -da. done isn't it that will be my answer let's continue with d d do i find what f square 0 so again how do i find f square 0 i feel like i keep repeat the same thing it must be very boring now but yeah i try to do it faster so f square isn't it f f FF isn't it the first step will be separate them because you know you cross one by one. Saying n times already, just this particular video. So guys, isn't it this zero? Can you open bracket? No. Because no matter how complicated inside is, to be honest, they actually call it FX. And guys, FX is not the yellow one, but it's the blue one. Can you see the blue one here? Here. 
okay, which is x squared minus 1. So isn't it my fx equation will be x squared minus 1 instead. So I repeat again. Is it correct or not? I write like that. No. Why not? Because guys, now my x becomes 0. So isn't it again, take out your eraser, erase off the x and the x will become 0 instead. I really hope you guys understand this eraser method. I created this. I really feel like it's so easy. Right after you master it, obviously you can straight away opt in. No need to really using eraser, but I always try to use this method for you, your understanding, okay? So F, 0 squared 0, 0 minus 1, negative 1. Isn't it? This is what I get so far. Again, why stop here? Nope, because these questions, you still got one function called F. So isn't it again, this one called Fx, and Fx again in the blue one. And based on the blue one, isn't it the Fx equation here, yeah? Isn't it x squared minus 1? I repeat, is it correct or wrong? Wrong. Why wrong? The x. The x should become what? Negative 1. By now, we should really understand it. Negative 1 squared, not too sure you can press calculator. I think you guys will get the answer of 1. Is it? No, 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 no. Sorry, my mistake. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1. I guess getting the answer of 0. So hopefully you guys get the answer of 0. Just like that. So next, I'm going to do one exam type questions. Understand so far? Really hope you understand. If you understand, please comment below and try to motivate me to create more videos. Mm, my dear. So look at this question too. So this question too, again, okay, these very basic exam type questions. So guys, they give me one fx, they give me one gx, they give me one gfx, okay? So eventually they give me three equations. So let's look at A. A, they say, find the value of P and Q. So guys, how many unknowns are to find? Two. Based on what I taught you, or maybe you haven't viewed my previous video, but you should know this in max, okay, in lower form max. Whenever you want to find two unknowns, which is P and Q, two unknowns, right? Then you must have two information or at least two equations. Now, I got how many equations? I got dun, 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 three equations. Then I got more than what I needed. Then how do I do it? I hope you guys know that. Usually you want to find two unknown, you will have two equations. And these two equations, what will you do? What will you do? You will actually using substitution to get the answer. You learn in lower form, okay? So guys, these questions, then I got three equations. Then can I using substitution? Let me ask you guys. Can I solve the first one inside the second one? I hope you answer me no. Can I solve the first one inside the third one then? I hope you answer me no as well. Can I solve the second one inside the third one then? Also cannot. Why all cannot? I give you guys a very easy example. Let's say when I say x is 5 and I got another equation called 3a equals to b. Do you think, do you ever sub the 5 inside the a? No. Will you sub the 5 inside the b? No. And why no? Because they are not the same thing. The theory is so easy to understand. So this question, this 3 equation, I'm not going to sub it in. It's all because they are not even the same and why would I sub it in? So guys, they are not the same. Never mind. I can make them the same. How do I make them the same? Because you guys have the single function. Single function. And one composite function. That is their different, right? So isn't it single function and single function? You just learn to combine them and you can actually combine both of them become a composite function. Can you see the one I write in red pen? I really hope you understand that. So isn't it they give you GFX? You should make your effort to find another GFX. Then later on, you will have two similar things. Then you guys can sub it in based on whatever I say. You can only sub the same thing. So that's the reason I know of oh, my purpose. I should find GFX. Okay? So questions won't always tell you what is the way of doing it. You must relate it by yourself. You must think about the way of you getting the answer. So isn't it these two GFX? We're going to combine them. How do we combine them? Just now you already learned it. First step, we split it. So we've got inner function, outer function. Always start from inner. Inner called fx, isn't it? fx is the one in blue, which is what? 1 minus x. Correct? By now, you guys should understand this already. Can I open bracket? No, for n times I keep saying that. You cannot open bracket, but remember, no matter how complicated inside is, there are always alphabet x. And isn't it outside, we will call it g. So in full, we will call it gx. And do I have gx equation? Yes. I look to the top, I realize gx is the one in yellow. So gx equation is what? Based on the yellow one, uh, isn't it? Px squared 
plus Q. So I repeat. Is it correct or not? I write like that? No. I keep repeat the same thing, yeah? Because if they are x, you can write x. But now the x already become 1 minus x. So isn't it again? Take the eraser, erase off the x. And the x should become 1 minus x instead. Can you guys see that? Please put a bracket, yeah, my dear. Don't make mistake on this small little thing. So now all you need to do is just start to expand it. So can my p times inside? I hope you didn't do this kind of mistake. Why is mistake? Because guys, power always comes first. You should settle the power first. So p. So 1 minus x squared is then it's double of 1 minus x bracket and then plus q. I scared you guys will make mistake. I normally will open the bracket first instead of times the p in. Okay, because the p will actually affect all of them. If you can expand all together, obviously it's good. But just in case you can't, so normally I do step by step, okay? I just want to have very little mistake, okay? No, no, no. I want to have no mistake, okay? So 1 times 1, 1. 1 times negative x, negative x. Negative x times 1, negative x still. Negative x times negative x, negative, negative, positive, x times x, x squared. Isn't this is why I get so far? So next only, I will times the p in. P times 1, P. P times negative X, negative PX. Negative PX. P times X squared, PX squared. Plus Q. So obviously those you can combine, you will combine them. So P, I think it's alone. Negative PX minus another, another PX is in the negative 2PX. Isn't it then PX squared plus Q. Finally, because nothing to combine anymore. Finally, do you realize I found my own gfx my own version of gfx by combining the first two together can you see that so this gfx is the one i get myself then do they provide me another gfx yes isn't it another one here so finally is these two same now yes once they are same like legit same okay so isn't it now you guys can sub in based on substitution so one i call it equation one one i call it equation two isn't it now we can sub one into two you want to using sub also can or just want to one right on the left, one right on the right also, I think you guys will understand it. So the one I get called GFX, the one they get also called GFX, name same from the same equation, isn't it? The answer should be the same. So the one I get, I copy it on the left hand side. The one they give, I copy it on the right hand side. Correct? So on this moment, how do you guys continue? If you got view my 1.3 inverse function video, I got teach about this, which is actually using compare. Why I gonna why I gonna use compare? Because guys, look at this line. Isn't it got p, q, x, three unknown? Whenever you have more than one un, more than one unknown, which is like two and above, you cannot using move around method because no matter how you move around, it will just start with two unknown. So you guys will use a method called compare. So hopefully you guys remember compare method. You should remember, okay? If not, I will put the 1.2 inverse function link at the description box below, okay? So guys, then how do we using compare? For you guys to use compare, very easy one. Just the left side and the right side must look alike. At least the arrangements must look alike. So do you guys realize the right side one? The sequence itself look like general form, okay? How about the left hand side? The left hand side, isn't it then the x squared? Should write in front because based on the right side, seriously, it's x squared in front. Then isn't it the x should be in the middle? Then isn't it the non-x I'll write at the back, which is the p and the q I write at the back, correct? So on this moment, I try to make it this big, okay? So guys, then by now, you guys will use a method called compare. What is compare? They just need to look alike, and most important, they must have some similarity. So do you guys realize that I got x squared here, you got x squared here? I got x here, you got x here. Okay, that's the only two things I see both of them having. Similar one. So now you guys can use compare. So do you guys realize x squared in front is p. His x squared in front is 3. So once you compare that, isn't it p answer should be 3. This is what we say compare. Just using your eyes to look at both of them. Got the answer. So next one, isn't it x in front is negative 2p. Another x in front is negative 6. Again, we're going to use compare. So isn't it negative 2p equals to negative 6? Negative, negative, positive, times 2, move there, there by 2. Isn't it again getting back p equals to 3? But it's actually unnecessary to do this again. 
Why? Because no matter you do the first one or the second one, you are just getting the P answer, which is 3, correct? So just choose one of it to show. So I'm showing the first one. And let's continue the behind part. So isn't it the behind part for this right-hand side is 5? So some students will tell me, teacher, Q is 5. Guys, why you think Q is 5? Look carefully. X behind is 5, correct? So this X behind is what? Is P plus Q. You cannot just choose one of them. If the X behind got more than one element, you will choose the whole thing instead of just one alphabet. Remember that. So on the behind of X, I get P plus Q. So only once I compare, I know that. Let me write at the bottom. P plus Q were equivalent to 5. Correct? And now you guys know that the P is 3. So 3 plus Q equals to 5. And ta-da! My Q, I get the answer of 2. Just like that. Hopefully you guys understand it. You see a very basic exam type questions that always come out. So let's continue with B. Shouldn't be a problem for B. So G square zero. I repeat, it will be G, G, zero. Double G. So first step will be split them. After split them, isn't it always do the inside part first? So I repeat again the inside part called GX. Because you cannot open bracket, the full name is only called GX. Do I have GX equation? Yes. Look back to the questions. Don't simply use her. The blue one is FX. The purple one is GFX. Now they want GX. Isn't it GX will be the one in yellow? But the problem is, I realize the yellow equation is not even a complete one because they got alphabet P and Q inside. But most important, do you guys already get your P and Q answer just now? Yes. So isn't it once you guys get it, you guys should update your equation make it a complete one to survive in whatever they to ask next so i realized my p is three my q is two so isn't it to make it a complete one now my gx equation will be three x squared plus two instead so now let's try to use it so now i know my gx equation will be three x squared plus two so I repeat, is it correct or not? I write like that. No. Which part wrong? The x. So I take an eraser, I erase off the x. And isn't it the x will become 0? Because the x on top, they write 0 instead. By now, you should really understand it. So 3 times 0 squared plus 2. Not too sure again. Press calculator. 0 squared, 0, 0 times 3, 3, 3 plus 2, 2. Got it. 2. That means I'm done walking the first bridge. So continue. This one is only called gx. Okay? So GX equation isn't it still the yellow one? So the yellow equation I based on the top here, isn't it will be 3x squared plus 2 still. Is it correct or wrong? Wrong. Which part wrong? The x. The x must become what? 2. So guys, this time I will press calculator. 40. Do you guys get the answer of 40? Just like that for today. Hopefully you understand everything. Please give me a thumbs up if you understand it and you can share it to your friend. So see you on the next one. Next one, I'm teaching you guys the one that you guys always cannot do in composite functions. So see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Annyeong.